been feeling a little black-pilled lately because it seems like everywhere I turn, evil is winning in the world. I hate to say that, but it's true. People are more interested in sharing dumb pictures on Facebook than actually going out and dealing with problems. The people that do get involved in arguing over problems don't actually do anything but more importantly, it seems like a pretty large amount of people out there are content with evil winning. They are themselves evil. They do in fact hold objectively wrong views. The problem that I see now is we have basically the United States is smothering in this evil. The evil is often called leftists or liberals, even though it's not actually classically liberal. That term has been perverted. It's called Democrats in some places, or at least it runs under Democrats in some places. It runs under Republicans in other places. The problem is that the evil is winning. The evil is being allowed to run things. I see parents go to school board meetings because they don't like the fact that their children are being taught to be racist assholes. Their children are being taught that white people are evil because of the color of their skin and not the content of their character. Or rather that the content of their character is necessarily bad because of the color of their skin. This new original sin that lacks a religious basis is being hammered down children's throats. And parents that don't like it, in some cases, are getting very angry about it. But guess what? The evil wins every freaking time. Every time the evil wins. Why? Because these school board assholes, guess what? Oh, the parents got violent with us at a school board meeting. Well, why did the parents get violent with you at a school board meeting? Is it because you're an elected official and these are the people that you represent and you are not doing the will of the people but rather your own little political agenda or the agenda of the people that are paying you off or the agenda of the people that have blackmailed you? You're not serving your constituents. You're serving yourself. People are getting violent with you not because they want to get violent but because violence... Let, uh, let me borrow a quote from some famous thing that happened in 2020. Violence is the language of the unheard. It is an incitement to violence when you do not listen. When you do what's wrong, when you harm people for so long, and I'm not talking about the fake harm that is insisted upon by the social justice lunatics. The thing where if someone decides that today they're going to be a girl instead of a boy, or a boy instead of a girl, and you call them the opposite, that you're endangering their lives, even though it was just little words. Not that fake harm, but real harm. You do real harm for long enough, and you do not listen to the people you are harming saying, stop hurting us. We do not consent. Eventually, you are inciting violence by failing to listen when people try to talk to you. So this school board meeting, they, they move the school board meetings where the people get too rowdy because they're not being listened to, to virtual meetings. Nobody's doing anything to figure those out and disrupt them. Oh, they went virtual. Now they can impact these people and exact their tyranny without risking having to actually face the people that elected them and be held to the policies that those people want. In another case, just today I saw some video where the FBI shut down a school board meeting. I think it was a Project Veritas video, but I can't remember. But a school board meeting where parents were saying, you must get rid of these people that are teaching our children to be racist garbage. The FBI showed up and scuttled off the school board members. So, what's the FBI doing shutting down a school board meeting? What's the FBI doing shutting down a public meeting of elected officials with their constituency? And this is the problem. The evil people are winning and no one's doing anything about the evil people. And that's why I feel so blackpilled right now. 
People will screech on Facebook all day long, one direction, the other direction, pro-vax, anti-vax. Texas is evil. Texas is awesome. Deus volt. But nobody's doing anything about the actual evil people. And this infrastructure bill thing that's going on right now, mid to late 2021, I'm going to throw this cell phone out the window if it doesn't stop making whirring noises. Watch this. Watch this. Boom. Vibrate. Mid-2021, mid to late 2021, we are seeing this stupid infrastructure bill, the one that I already talked about having breathalyzer requirements for cars, which is a really bad idea and it's going to get some people killed that are drunk but really need to get out of a situation where violence will be enacted upon them. This happens. It's a reality. It's not some sort of theoretical. Someone will die, but no one will hear about it because their name doesn't matter because they are not some sort of rich person or some politician or the friend of some big donor to a politician or a rich person. They're not important, so you'll never hear about their deaths at the hands of the ignition interlock system that's mandated in their new car. And now, this infrastructure bill, it's, it's just so far from infrastructure at this point. There are things being regulated that have nothing to do with infrastructure. They're just basically going, oh, what can we do to make things worse for everyone? The vaccine mandates that they're trying to shove into federal bills, that stuff, those things should be choices. And the whole problem that people have with that is that you don't let them have their choice. You do not give them free choice. When you're bullying someone into making the right choice, that's not letting them make medical decisions for themselves based on their own individual circumstances. Circumstances which you, as a central planner, cannot possibly understand because you are too far removed. There is no time, there is no reason for the bureaucracy three levels removed from someone to be making medical decisions that affect someone on the most personal level possible, their very existence, their survival. There is no reason for that to be the case. You should not have a say-so over personal medical decisions. But now, now in the infrastructure bill, they're basically wanting to bypass the Fourth Amendment by having the IRS get everyone's bank transactions all of the time. Why? Tax evasion. Because we need to track tax evasion. We need to get rid of this crap. These people are seriously considering this right now. This is something that is out there right now. You could get on the phone and you could call your senators and Congress people and tell them not to vote for it. They probably won't listen to you because they don't represent the people properly anymore. But you could at least make the phone call. If you and everyone else did, maybe they'd think twice before voting in favor of this crap. So you have a situation now where you had the Bank Secrecy Act decades ago in the name of stopping money laundering. The Bank Secrecy Act basically opened everyone's bank accounts up to the IRS for inspection. Then you had the Patriot Act and all the 9-11 authoritarianism that opened everybody's bank accounts up even more and put more scrutiny on people and basically enabled them to do, the government to do whatever they want, carte blanche to do whatever the hell they want, as long as it's in the service of stopping money laundering. You had Obama put out an unconstitutional program um, called, I believe, Operation Choke Point. Look that one up. It was ruled unconstitutional way after it was possible to stop the effects. And those effects are being seen even today. Operation Choke Point was where legal businesses that were considered, quote, high-risk categories, like firearms dealers or porn, were basically choked out of the banking system. The government went to the banks and said, you know, if, if you let these firearms dealers and these porn companies and these other undesirables that are 100% legal businesses, mind you, following all of the rules, following the laws, doing what is required of them, following the rules legally, 100% legal, but if you let them have a bank account, if you let them push transactions through your bank, give them a card, give them a merchant account, if you allow them to participate in electronic financial transactions, if you allow them to be part of the digital economy, you know, we might have to, um, it'd be a shame if someone showed up at this bank and, you know, 
scrutinized your books or, uh, I don't know, d dug around and, oh, wait, what will we find if we start looking through your books? Hmm, you know, it'd be a shame if we were to have regulations that directly conflict with one another that you're trying to adhere to and you're skirting a line and we can find pretty much any books we can find something to charge you with. It'd be a shame if we had to show up to your bank and look through your stuff and find something. And that's what they did. So the banks, they're not going to let them continue to do business. It's a no-brainer. If you run a bank, why would you let them? Why would you allow these companies to stay there? So they got rid of them. They got rid of the people who have anything to do with erotic things or firearms or drugs, you know, like not necessarily like marijuana, which was illegal, but even industries that kind of go along with that. You know, alcohol, all of it. Dumped. Tons of them dumped. Silently. No one heard about this in the news. This was all hush-hush. The banks just dumped them, wouldn't tell them why, and that's it. But this persists to this day. The banks are dumping people because they don't like what they choose to do for money. Because they don't like what they believe politically. Because someone else doesn't like what they believe politically, and even though the bank doesn't give a rat's ass, well, the government's already set the precedent that if a bank associates with the wrong businesses or the wrong people, the government will retaliate against those banks. And that doesn't go away. Just because Operation Choke Point was ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court doesn't make the effects go away. Because now the banks are hip to the fact that the government can and will hurt them if they make the mistake of associating with the wrong political people or the wrong businesses. If you make the mistake of letting people do business with you that these other people don't like, even if you don't care, you will get hurt if you associate with these other people. The evil people are winning. Epstein, Epstein didn't kill himself. You remember that meme? Nobody gives a rat's ass about that today, do they? Epstein didn't kill himself. Cheers, Epstein didn't kill himself. You're a dead meme. Epstein didn't kill himself, but nobody cares anymore. Who killed Epstein? Well, we have all these theories, but guess what? <laughs> Swept under the rug. Okay, here's some more. You want some more? Because I've got more, okay? The evil continues to win. Let's talk about Edward Snowden. Oh, Jesus Christ, go back a decade, why don't you, bro? God, the, the gray beard on your gray beard is showing, bro. Well, Edward Snowden basically nuked his own life in the United States and had to run away to Russia because he did what he thought was right. Now, whether you think what he did was right or not is not really for me to decide or discuss here at this time. That that's a whole nother video. Plus, I'd hate it if I was to put out a video talking about that and lose the ability to get some kind of government clearance that I might need for a high paying job in the future, right? Right? But regardless of what you think about what Snowden did, Snowden revealed illegal spying programs that were being used to look at everything that Americans do. Carte blanche, not carte blanche, but everything. Like, it, there was no discrimination among it. It was just siphoning up data at huge data centers for huge multinational corporations based in the United States. Microsoft, Apple, Google, Yahoo, all these humongous megacorps that tons of your private stuff goes through every day, that all of your private communications tend to find their way through one way or the other. And they were just mass siphoning up all of this data, all of these communications by American citizens, completely bypassing the Fourth Amendment. So what happened to PRISM? What happened to the NSA spying program? Oh shit, we got caught. Oh shit. Oh, well, uh, don't worry about it, guys. We're taking that out. Just, yep, yeah, and um, mm -hmm. big companies confirm that uh, they're no longer participating with the NSA PRISM program. And then everybody forgets about it. Then they put it all back in place under your nose. Then it all goes back in, but uh, maybe they don't call it PRISM now. Maybe they call it something else. Maybe they do it under another program. They wait, and this happens all the damn time. They wait until you stop paying attention 
to the issue du jour, and then they put it right back. They go right back and do it again. They're like cockroaches. You kill off a generation of cockroaches with some roach motels or whatever, and they go away. But then when you're not looking, oh God, they came back. And you just happen to notice one day when it's way too late to do anything about it, after everything's crept in, after it's sunk roots into the ground, after it cannot be removed. Only then does anybody notice, hey, you know, that, um, that, that whole blanket spying on American citizens thing, yeah, that, uh, it looks like that came back. Yeah, it may have taken various other forms, but yeah, I'm noticing that it's, it's basically back. But it's not called the same thing, and no one's looking at it. And if I scream about it, no one's going to be paying attention to it at this point. Because guess what? Guess what? Donald Trump came along. Praise Jesus. Praise Donald Trump. Orange Jesus came along. Oh, God. The, the, the people that want to screw us all over, they couldn't have possibly picked a better person to put in charge to make it possible to continue screwing us than Donald Trump. Because even though Donald Trump actually did a lot of good things in general that a lot of people don't want to admit, and yeah, he did bad things too. Let's just be honest, every president does good and bad things. But even though he did plenty of good things, the truth of the matter is there was no way to get that nasty little class divide to go away and replace it with divides that will keep us fighting each other instead of attempting to drag the people at the top down and take from them what they have illegally, immorally, unethically taken from everybody else as a big collective. <clears throat> Let's talk about the eviction moratorium. You had people who owned property. You had that property taken from them. That's what the eviction moratorium really is. A stealing of private property is a taking of property by the government without fair and just compensation for the value that was taken. The government stole a bunch of property for a year. It was ruled illegal. Well, it wasn't ruled illegal, but it was. And then, <clears throat> when they did it again, it was ruled illegal again, and nothing's been done about it. Those, those landlords, they haven't been paid back. The landlords got totally screwed, not paid back. You know the renters that thought they could just get out of it? Yeah, they, they, they're going to end up on the street. Let's talk about the, um, the stimulus checks, the enhanced unemployment program. Let's talk about all the money that was cranked out, 2020, 2021, all the coronavirus, free money, boys! All that money that's been cranked out, yeah, exploding inflation, right? The, the people who don't do anything are paid not to do anything, and then we wonder why no one's doing anything. We wonder why products aren't available for purchase. We wonder why we can't go to a fast food place and get food anymore because there's literally no one to do the job. Because why would they work for such a crappy wage? Why would they work in such a crappy job? No one wants to work in a restaurant. No one wants to pick up trash on the side of the road. No one wants to do dirty jobs. No one wants to be a sewer technician or something. No one wants to do this stuff, but someone has to do it because it's part of a functioning society. And the deal is that a job that sucks, someone will do it if you pay them enough money. And the truth is there are a lot of bad jobs that actually pay pretty well. Restaurant jobs, traditionally the domain of young people who need to get a footing in the real world, who need to start making some money and learning how to take orders and count cash. I mean, real simple stuff. Young people who need to get job skills so that they can move on to better jobs. It's really a stepping stone for a lot of people. But because the government keeps hosing the economy, you know, there, there's, there's no jobs. Like, old people went into restaurants because now their retirements got destroyed in 08, 09, you know, when the Great Recession hit. Their retirement accounts were mangled and destroyed. And so you saw an influx of old people that were retired into fields where they should not have been in the first place because they were fine till the government piled up this crap and then it all came tumbling down. And guess what? They protected the big banks. They didn't let the big banks fail. They didn't let any of the people that were responsible for what happened suffer the consequences of their actions. It's always the people on the bottom. It's always you. It's always your family. It's always the people that you know and love and care about that get screwed. And the worst part of it now is that they finally 
come up with a system under which all of you motherfuckers will choke each other out. You'll just cut each other's throats. Over what? Masks? Vaccines? What? Racism? Perceived racism? Doesn't even have to be real racism. Doesn't have to be racism that you've witnessed yourself. Doesn't even have to be racism against a class you're a member of. You get mad about it anyway. You hate yourself. You hate your neighbors. You hate your friends. You hate everyone on the internet. And why do you hate all these people? Because Everything and everyone is racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, Islamophobic, and so on. You're so busy choking each other out over dumb things. And these people are up here in their ivory towers laughing their asses off. Oh, yes. This is entertainment for us. And look at this. Oh, now everybody's ordering from Amazon. Oh, look, all that money's going up to Amazon. All that money's going up to all these big companies and all these little companies going out of business. One of my customers owns a vet clinic. Gone. It's gone. It's not gone gone. It's consolidated into a bigger one. At least that's what I think is happening based on what has come to me. But this is what you see. You're seeing all of the little guys at the bottom losing what they've got, what little they've got, and having to give it up to people with more money, more power, more infrastructure, more connections, more. The mores are taking what little the lesses have left. But you dumb, dumb motherfuckers are all busy choking each other out because you think that your neighbor might not be completely non-racist. Or you think your neighbor might not be vaccinated. Or you think your neighbor is one of those anti-mask lunatics or a Trump supporter or something. The rich people don't care. How many people in Congress have died since the coronavirus hit? Please, please, for the love of God, tell me someone in the United States Senate, the United States Congress, that has died of COVID-19. Go on, I'll wait. Have you found one? You'd be lucky if you found one. Maybe there is one. I'm not aware of it. I guarantee you it's not in the double digits. I guarantee you that if the death rate is a bit over 1% and you've got several hundred people in Congress, you're probably not seeing a 1% death rate in Congress. You're probably not seeing very much representation in the bad outcomes in Congress. You're probably not seeing very much representation of the bad outcomes in this society among the people who have all the damn money and resources, among the people who have all the connections. For some strange reason, the most vaccine-hesitant people in the country are PhDs. And PhDs, well, guess what? Those pe You don't get to have a PhD without... Uh, shall we say, um, inhaling the D to some extent. You don't get to the point that you have a high doctorate degree and you can make enough money to survive with that degree by not kissing a little ass, by not making those connections to be into an in-group of ivory tower dwellers. Man, I'm running out of coffee. This is bad. But this is the thing. We're down here fighting over scraps. We're eating each other alive. And the people who are behind it all, the people responsible, the government, the wealthy, the people who control the largest corporations, are more than happy to just laugh and flick the dollar bills as they run all the way to the bank with them while you kill your neighbor for being racist, even if they're not. Because what do you care? You know that guy over there, oh, you know, he's close. You can you can physically go after him. You know, you can you can get the guy next door. You can get that asshole's business shut right down. You know, spread some nasty rumors about him in the community. You can shut him right down. But Jeff Bezos, you ain't going to shut him down. What power do you have to kill Amazon? But what power does Amazon have to kill you and your business and your neighbor's business? And see, that's the thing. 
you set the people around you on fire because these big corporate government whatever overlords have gotten you to focus on the people that are near you to set your community on fire because oh we've got to weed out the bad eggs in our community but you're doing nothing to pull them down out of their ivory towers and dismantle their humongous monoliths that are siphoning up everything that you need. By the time you are suffering enough that the problems that they have caused for you bring your attention to the fact that it's them doing it, you will have no power left. You will not have a bank account because you opened your mouth for too long, got too much attention, and had the wrong viewpoint. You will not have a bank account. You will not have a website. You get kicked off by your registrar, get kicked off by your hosting provider because they can't deal with the heat. You won't have an account on social media because you'll be banned because you're hateful and abusive. You will be unpersoned. You will be prevented from participating in the digital society by humongous corporations that a bunch of your evil neighbors decided was totally fine for the it's totally okay for those big corporations to do that to you because if you hold wrong think views you know racism whatever if if someone has called you a racist because they disagree with you you are evil and must be stopped even though both you and that neighbor are suffering under the boot of government and wealthy people you two are fighting each other instead of fighting them. Way to go. I am so tired of this. And I don't want to talk in circles, but I feel like that's where this is about to go. So I'm going to cut it off here. Stop killing your neighbor. Stop choking out the people beside you. But more importantly, if you're one of the people that has these evil views, stop. Stop being evil. So-called anti-racism is evil. Not even because of the fact that it just makes you a racist, but because of the fact that it causes you to hate the people beside you that you need to take down the people that are actually hurting you. The people that are actually putting in place the policies that make it impossible for you to earn money, that make it impossible for you to take care of your family, that make it impossible for you to continue to succeed, thrive, even participate in society and one day that cancel train that you're on will loop back and eat you and you will be the one who made it we've seen countless examples of this but by the time you see those jaws coming to swallow you up it's too late you are unpersoned you don't matter you don't have any say everybody ignores you nobody gives a rat's ass about what you say what you think no one wants to hear your story you can tell your story all day long. No one cares because if no one's listening to your story, it doesn't exist for all practical purposes. You don't have that reach or they take it away from you. You don't exist. And that's where we are today. And I can't stand it. it drives me nuts. And I am absolutely fed up and I am tired of it. And I am feeling so black-pilled because I don't see an end to this crap. Because everyone's too busy choking out their neighbor. Get off your neighbor's neck and go start tearing down Amazon one brick at a time. Go to these school board meetings. And you know what? They go virtual. Find out where they're doing it virtually. Make them uncomfortable there. Because if they run away and try to hide from you despite being public officials that are beholden to you, you have every right to go after these people. And you know what? I generally disagree with the whole philosophy of making other people uncomfortable is the only way to get things done. But at some point, you don't have a choice. This is different from 2020. The crap that went down in 2020 was not the, the violence being the language of the unheard. It was violence for violence's sake. It was, those people were the heard people. It was on TV everywhere. Their messages have been around before and since. The true unheard of the people who want things to go back to some semblance of normality and prosperity 
and healthy social functioning. The people who want to be able to run a business in peace, enjoy their property quietly, get along with their neighbors, and be able to discuss things in a relatively civil manner, to be able to have employment, to participate in the digital economy, and to survive and thrive. But the people who are preventing that are truly evil. They must be stopped. They must be cut out and removed. And it all starts at the top. There's an old saying in the plumbing profession. It goes something like this. Shit always flows downhill. You're at the bottom of the hill. If you're watching this, the shit is flowing onto you. You need to plug it at the source. So get off your neighbor and get climbing. Like, comment, subscribe, look down in the, 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 the you know, down in the description. Give me some money because this was awesome. Right? So awesome. I talked for 30 minutes on the internet. You still gonna do anything? <laughs> I doubt it. Whatever. Do what you will with this, but I hope that something comes of it. Please share. Please share because I think that this is important and that everybody needs to understand what they're really up against and they need a reality check. Now, if you'll excuse me, I am desperate for two things. I need more coffee and I seriously need to shave this godforsaken beard. Oh my God. See ya. And by the way, before I cut this, no matter who you are, no matter what you think, you're a human being. You do deserve a baseline respect, even if you staunchly disagree, even if you think that I am the devil. You still deserve respect and love and care. And one of these days, you'll see things my way. Maybe you just have to wait a few years, but you'll understand. Give it time. Stand back. Look at where you really are. You'll see. I love you all. Good day.